introduce Dan Shade, a distinguished member of the California Wrestling Hall of Fame, class of 2006. Congratulations, Dan. Thank you. Uh, in your long and illustrious wrestling career, uh, what individuals had the greatest influence on you? Well, if we're talking about influence, it it's, uh, would undisputably be David and Mark Schultz. Um, I was uh, very fortunate in 1979, my father took me to uh, the California State Wrestling Championships in American River Junior College, and we got to see Dave Schultz win his uh, state title. Um, knowing the story about him competing in Tbilisi er earlier that year, him being from our section of California, uh, uh, CCS and wrestling at Palo Alto High School, we were all really kind of impressed by that. Um, then I ended up uh, working out with those uh, fellows when I was in, um, in high school, junior high and high school, and uh, ultimately went to University of Oklahoma because they, they were there. And uh, then wrestling another uh, 10 years internationally with... Uh, with the combination of both of them and spent uh, basically 17 years wrestling with David and, and about um, 11 or 12 wrestling with Mark and they were a tremendous influence, um, most probably the most important influence. I would think so. Uh, who was your idol growing up? Originally it was uh, Dan Gable. Um, I read uh, a book, a wrestler uh, named Dan uh, shortly after his uh, 1972 championship and that really got me um, interested in wrestling, the mentality of wrestling, the training, the toughness of it, uh, kind of uh, Dan Gable's personal quest for being a world and Olympic champion and, and I just was really impressed by that in junior high and, and that uh, gave me a lot of uh, inertia going into junior high wrestling and high school wrestling and, and uh, for a long time uh, you know thought about uh, wrestling for him when he was a coach at the University of Iowa and um, even though we, uh, at a certain point we, we were uh, opponents uh, he was coaching against me and I was wrestling against his guys I was never um, I was always open to what he was doing with his guys to make them better. So I was learning from him all the way through the process, even in the international arena when we were uh, training at Fox Catcher out in Pennsylvania, and he was world team coach, and we were all on the national team, and he was still looking for new ways to train um, different kinds of guys. The brands on one hand and Dave Schultz on the other, two totally different uh, types of training regimes, and we had conversations about this. but. He was a big inspiration, but there's really been a lot over the years. You know, I'm fascinated by a lot of wrestlers and what they've accomplished. Alexander Carillon's a really fascinating guy. Um, not not only his wrestling, but his participation in uh, Russian government and politics, and his uh, kind of his mindset as a wrestler, and a lot of the Eastern European wrestlers, Jordanov and Kadartsev and Fedzaev, and really. We <laughs> There's a lot of very inspirational guys, very interesting wrestlers. Yeah, a lot of good models, that's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, how did you get started in wrestling, and what age did you get started? Um, my father was a high school wrestling coach, and a football and wrestling coach. Um, I was uh, one of those uh, kids that you see at the tournament that's uh, in, the, in the bleachers, under the bleachers, uh, sitting on the side of the mat, running in and out of the gym, kind of uh, that when I was little. And uh, when I started going to practices and actually uh, competing at about the age 10, I found myself very um, feeling very natural in the environment. And so I just... Uh, um, took to it and so it was definitely the influence of my father and so I started about 10 years old and um, got off to a pretty good start great club program and had really good instructors right from the beginning I thought and it was a lot of fun successful right off too that's for sure right? yeah it, when you're successful right off it, it, it gives you motivation and uh, it helps you pick up the inertia that you need to keep training and go for the next matches and so that's true what aspect of your character helped you know, make you the wrestler you were, do you think? Well, you know, wrestling's always that combination of things, but uh, I would say pretty analytical as far as what the big picture is, what it takes to get to that goal. And, and, to, and to once you've accepted that that's your challenge and that's what you're going to do, the next assumption or the next thing is that you have to back that up with psychological fortitude or toughness 
and I don't want to overuse the word tough, but it but it is really like that. It's just it's that it's that psychological stamina of when you know things get kind of down and dirty, but you're going to press on and still try to obtain that goal. It, relentlessness, and so it's the combination maybe of being you know analytical and, and and seeking out what the goal is, and then being relentless towards that goal. Making sure you have to make it happen. Yeah. Uh, is, is there any one outstanding memory you have in this sport? Well, I got a bunch, <laughs> and I've thought about it quite a bit the last few days, uh, knowing that this event was coming up. Um, two things uh, that really stand out for me, that just the way you feel after an event, I've, I felt like uh, cha winning championships was always paramount what what was the goal most of the time and um, winning the 92 US Open um, I thought I was in a great position to to make the Olympic team that year and I wrestled seven matches I came out of the tournament um, I think 56 points to four for my opponent and completely unscathed not a scratch on my body just a little sore in the shoulders and in the back the next day and just felt like I was really uh, wrestling the way I wanted to wrestle and just having that feeling of like you know I if you can wrestle seven matches and outscore your opponents that way and come through you know a tournament that's that was a really good feeling the the thing that sticks in my mind is maybe one of my greatest accomplishments and most satisfactory is when I went to the University of Oklahoma and I accepted the challenge of being a varsity wrestler. I wrestled 165 matches varsity and never did not start a match in four years. And um, that's kind of what I'm about. You know, I just, I, I knew that if, if you unplug once, that, that kind of breaks the sequence. It gives an opportunity for another person to maybe get in your spot. Mm -hmm. And for me, just, just being in there for 165 bouts was the sum total of a career and everything that happened in there, um, you know, good, bad, indifferent. Um, the, the, the point is that <laughs> I wrestled all my matches and I was able to walk away and say, that's what I did. And um, I feel pretty good about that. And, um, you know, everything that went with it's good too, you know, but, uh, but just that fact. I think I, if people wanted to look at me as a wrestler, I'd like them to just see that because that's, how I'd like to be measured on my consistency and my wherewithal with what my goal is. You bet. Would you change anything if you could do it over again? Um, yeah, I would. Uh, I would press harder in my younger years for t to get into the international circuit, if to go after the world medals. Because by the time I really got my momentum built up, I was 24, 25 years old. And I would have really tried to have delved into that more in my late teens and early 20s and go against the real toughest guys. Because mm -hmm. the level change from high school to college was substantial, but the level change from college to international was very substantial. And it caught me a little bit by surprise. I thought that I would be able to break through at a, at a normal pace in one or two years, but as it turned out, it took. I never really got to where I wanted to get internationally. And when I got close and, and, and didn't make my ultimate goal, I was already kind of behind age-wise, where if I would have really had my opportunities younger and seen, you know, maybe the opportunity of the 88 Olympics and the 92 Olympics being just ex exactly where I wanted to be at those times, maybe even the 84 Olympics. Mm -hmm. And, and s I would advise younger other wrestlers to do that too, you know. Don't wait until you're done with college but you, you it, but it's a real tough situation because um college wrestling takes precedent when you're in college but if you want to be an international competitor you have to assert yourself at a very young age to be able to catch up with the international competition it's very rare for someone to break through at, in college right after college maybe smith or sanderson are the only two i've ever seen this day and age especially yeah uh what would you like people to remember about you Oh, I had a great time wrestling. Um, I felt like I was very generous as a team member. 
and tried to uh, support my team, my coaches, and uh, the people that I worked with. Um, and, uh, you know, for example, I was captain of almost every team I've ever been on, three times at Oklahoma University. And, and um, that, being a very reasonable and understanding person about the whole process that we're all going through at the same time, but most importantly is consistency, just being known as someone that when I set my goals, I consistently move towards that goal and, and, uh, and consistently uh, made the effort and did all the things that, was, that were necessary to, to try to achieve that goal. So consistency. Okay, good. Well, we thank you so much for spending some time with us, and congratulations again on being inducted into the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it.